Okay, so why don't we get started? It is four o'clock on um, Thursday. It's September first. We are approximately eighteen days away from the start of Mega Camp, which starts on Monday, the nineteenth of September, uh, with Mega Tech uh, starting at one one o'clock or one thirty in the afternoon on Monday, the nineteenth. Just to give everybody a quick update, um, right now we're at twenty six hundred and twenty two agents or people that have registered for Megatech, which is going to be the biggest Megatech we've ever had. So there's a lot of interest in um, that aspect of the business, and then we're going to also tie that into Mega Agent. So right now um, we've got um, um, right now we've got uh, a big Megatech coming up. Uh, we're at uh, just short of 4,500. Um, registered for Mega Agent last year, we had 6,600. So um, we've got plenty of room for Mega Agent. So we want to definitely keep pushing to get the agents there. And again, that's why we have these calls to help you with not only getting your guests there for recruits. Our goal is to help you get uh, your agents there. And so we've got room for. Our goal is to add another approximately. 2,200 people. Last year, during the last week of um, an on-site, we registered over 2,000 people. So we want to get that done a little earlier this year so we can plan a, a little more accordingly. So just to give you a rough idea, right now um, we are at about 8,800 registrations for Megacamp. Our goal is to have uh, 10,400 registrations. So Right now we're at uh, about um, just a little less than 2,000 registrations um, behind what our goal is. So it gives us plenty of time to get people in. So just to give you an idea, uh, last thing on this little area is be sure you're getting your hotels taken care of. If you're not going to be using your hotel rooms, um, please release them so we can use them for other people that are going to be coming during the and making your reservations the last week in uh, right before Mega Camp. So, Gary, are you on the call? I am. Perfect. So um, we're very honored today to have Gary Keller on the call with us, and we just wanted to get Gary's insights to getting people to Mega Agent and all the Mega Camps, and more importantly, getting um, our guests to help us grow our company so that we can reach our goal of being the number one company in the United States in agent count. So we wanted to get Gary's insights of why people should be coming to Megacamp and what would be the goal of getting your agents there and getting guests there. So, Gary, you just want to take over, and I'll let you go wherever you want to go for a while? Um, or you can ask me questions. Okay. So, great. So what's the most important reason people want to get to Megacamp for agents, our own agents? I think there's a couple of reasons, Tony. I think number one is content. I think a lot of time and energy. Most people don't realize that for um, a family reunion and mega camp, we, we spend pretty much all year. It's a it's a a 12 month um, you know uh, research project for us, where we have one person, Mindy Hager. That is her job. And Mindy works directly with me and with Jay Papazan and indirectly with you, Tony, uh, looking for the best of the best. Uh, those individuals who are uh, trying to get their business to the next level, to the highest level they can, if you will, and are following the models, uh, not just the MREA models, but just following the best absolute models they can uh, to achieve their goals. They're articulate about what they're, they're doing. Uh, they know their numbers. Uh, and they're eager to share. So the 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 biggest reason I, I would say is content, and simultaneously is the people that we're interviewing. You know, we changed formats a few years ago. We always are asking the question, how do we do this the best? And um, we changed formats. And a few years ago, we went from uh, me doing all the talking uh, to me doing some of the talking, and then the last couple of years is to me doing very little talking. And uh, in other words, we've gone from teaching to interviewing. And I think what's really cool about that is this is, a, this is one of the few times, in fact, even more so than family reunion, this has turned into one of the few times 
uh, an agent or a team leader or an OP could go to one event, sit down for a day and a half, and literally hear how the best are doing each of these areas. Uh, you know, the agent says, well, open houses don't work. No, come to Mega Camp. You're going to meet an individual who is nailing it in open house and using open house incredibly. So, well, farming doesn't work. No, you're going to meet an individual that farms four and a half days a week for two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon who will do a million in GCI this year. And they say, well, FISBOs don't work or expires don't work. Uh, that's not accurate. Uh, there are individuals that will, you know, make between 700000 and 800000 this year who are um, – who are literally doing for sale by, for sell by owners and expires is their number one thing. They say, well, you know, I'm confused about the Internet. Well, come on. The Internet works, and we'll show you, how, we'll show you the simple ways that that works. Well, I'm really confused about this or that. Well, the point is, is that what we try to do at MegaCamp is answer all those questions, and we try to do it in a fast and interesting format. So the point is, is that we start um, at 8 o'clock in the morning. We're going to run till 5 o'clock literally nonstop. Uh, on 30-minute cycles, 20-minute cycles, 45-minute uh, cycles, depending upon how many people that I'm interviewing. If it's one person, I'll do it in 20 minutes. If it's two people, I'll do it in 30 minutes. If it's three people, then I'm going to give them 40 to 45 minutes. And so I, I kind of use different formats. If I think there's a couple of people that are really doing a great job, or if Mindy's research comes back and says, look, there are actually a couple of people that are really great on this, um, then we'll say, okay, well, let's slot that into a, a 30 minute slot or a 45 or 40 minute slot. I'll tell you what's been fun, Tony, is uh, a few years ago we began uh, to realize that this whole idea of, and I'm not sure exactly who started the idea, but this whole idea of inside sales, which was about conversion rates, you know, when conversion rates really started to matter. Um, uh, agents before that, before, you know, uh, 2005. Right. Uh, you know, a, a, a poor conversion rate was fine, and the reason it was fine, not not that that was a good thing, don't get me wrong, but but it was it was an acceptable thing financially because they had so many leads, and the second mm -hmm. that leads became scarcer, they looked up and said, oh my gosh, a horrible conversion rate isn't going to work, so they began to focus on conversion rate, converting leads to appointments, and the top top agents began to understand that they wanted to quit giving out leads to their buyer agent or a listing specialist, and they wanted to give out appointments. And they started saying, well, how do we do that? Well, the first trend that came along was uh, what they call inside sales. And I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of it. And uh, I'm not a fan of it for a lot of reasons. But come to Mega Camp, and what you'll find out is what we've been advocating the last couple of years, which is a buyer agent with a showing assistant. Boy, mm -hmm. the agents that have embraced that, it is amazing. And we've got a couple mm -hmm. of awesome agents who have really, really, you know, dynamically changed their business. And it's beginning to be a business because of taking that one suggestion and finally having faith and going with it. So I think that it's content. I think it's the people that we're interviewing. I think it's the issue of the team leaders got agents who are having problems or challenges. I'm telling you, there isn't any other place they're going to be able to go and in one setting hear all the diverse uh, conversations, and we're going to run the gamut from farming to for sale by owners to the internet to working with buyers, working with sellers in this market. Um, every issue that we normally run into, uh, hiring people, building a, a, a business along the path of the seventh level, it, all of those issues are going to come up um, during mega camp. So if you were, if you're saying, okay, um, uh, where's the one place I can go? Well, this is it. If you were going to catch anything, it would it would be something like this because it just covers it. And what's really cool is when you say, well, should I bring a recruit? Well, you know, back in the beginning of doing Mega Camp, um, we we didn't do that sort of thing. In fact, oddly enough, Tony, we didn't even let team leaders or OPs in the room. Right. I, I didn't, right. and I got highly criticized by a team leader named Mary Tennant and <laughs> another team leader, uh, a couple of really awesome team leaders uh, in Oklahoma who I still remember, Susan Kessler and Sherry Lewis and Mary Tennant accosting me in a hallway of family saying, we want to know why we can't attend. And I have to be honest with you, my answer was very obnoxious. That's not totally unusual for me, though, <laughs> try to, to avoid, you know, uh, displaying that. Right. Um, but I said, you know, honestly, it's about the agents. It's not about you. And um, I don't want you to dumb it up. No offense, but most team leaders really don't know the business. By and large, they don't make it their job to know the business of being a mega agent 
better than the mega agent. Mega agents realizes this, and they don't want you in the room because you're dumbing it up. And I said, if you promise me that you'll you'll you know you'll start reading and studying and becoming masters of really these issues, and uh, you'll sit in the back of the room and not talk, then uh, you can attend. So you know it, it, we, that's kind of how this thing started getting big, was because we actually let team leaders sit in the back of the room. Well, what happened was um, that was a smart thing, and they were right. Not only did it help them. Uh, because they wanted to know what their people were being taught, and they were totally right, and I was totally wrong, by the way. Uh, but the other thing that it did was it opened their eyes and went, holy cow, I need to get more people here. And oh, by the way, if I had someone who was thinking of joining my, my office, I, I could do them a great favor by getting them here. They might actually experience what Keller Williams is about. Um, so it becomes this, this – this opportunity also to experience the culture. And you can talk about it all you want, but it's in this kind of environment that, um, in an environment that, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this, it's an environment that's controlled by Keller Williams International, um, meaning that it's the environment that was started back in 1983. It's the environment uh, that we talk about so much culturally, and they get to experience that. They get to experience um, what we do right, and they get to experience what we do when we make a mistake and how we fix it. And that's all part of that culture puzzle that people hear about, but they never really get to experience. And this is experiencing it at a huge level. The thing that I hear over and over again, and I, I know it's true because I, I've experienced it as well, is that these kind of events are like no other. Um, this isn't about Gary Keller or Diana Kokoska or Tony DeSella or Jay Papasan. These are about our people and getting them the best information. And there's no ego on that stage. Um, it's uh, it's all put in the hip pocket, and everything is about trying to help people in their business. That's why you would go. That, to me, that would be the, the thing. Here's an interesting thing. I need Mega Camp as much as anybody, and the reason is because the preparatory work that I have to do in order to get up there for a day and a half and work through this, it, it dr drives me for six months. The information I get and the understanding that I get about the business drives me until I, I get to family reunion when I have to update all that information again. So I use these two points, um, family reunion and mega camp, as my two points where I update my understanding and knowledge about the business, where I fill in the gaps and I hear things I didn't know, or it validates what I already knew and reminds me that that's still valid right now in the market. And it inspires me because I look up and I go, holy cow, who would have thought that you could net a million dollars a year being a, just an open house agent? Well, you can. Yep. You know, well, who would have thought you could have made that kind of money just being a FISBO and expired agent? Well, Greg Harrelson will tell you, you can. You know, yep. well, who would have thought I could have done that just representing builders or doing a builder trade in, you know, a trade up program like Steve Ryder? Oh, my gosh, what an amazing approach. So you hear all these approaches that are going on. What's really cool is the people up on stage, probably I would guess 70% or more of them, are past mega camp or family reunion attendees. And they sat in the audience, and they heard something that changed their life and their business. So they are very eager and more than willing uh, to participate back up on stage and give back. Great. So, Gary, just going back to that cultural thing, um, when you get a guest there, um, is it just letting them uh, be in the environment, or is it a, a is it a selling process? Um, oh, I think it's a you selling, you mean a selling process in what what respect? Uh, to, to, re, uh, to to motivate the recruit to possibly look at joining Kelly Williams, or do we just need to get them into the environment? My experience has been is it's a coaching opportunity. That what you okay. do is it's a couple of steps. Number one, you you coach or um, uh, convince them to come, and then once they're there, one of the questions you ask them is. You know, when you're going throughout the next day and a half, let me just ask you a question. If there were one thing you could learn, such that by learning it, you could go back and implement that into your business, and it would help you resolve your biggest problem and take it to the next level, what would that, what would that be? And let them articulate that. And then look at the schedule and say, you know what, that's on the schedule. Because, by the way, they'll all be on the schedule. Every Thank issue will be there. That's, that's our promise. That's what we, that's what we do. And you say, okay, well, let's pay attention to that. And when that session is over, when we, when we get back together, let's talk about that. 
and talk about what you learned and see if that doesn't um, open up a dialogue to help you make a decision about what you need to go to the next level. Great. Is this when you talk about uh, mega agents? What do you uh, what, what do you say is the ideal production level for this for Mega Camp? Oh my gosh, I don't think there is one. You know, back in the um, uh, back in the day when I started all this, we had a criteria, and we had okay. you know if you didn't do at least six million, we wouldn't let you in the room. And um, we still kind of talk about that as a criteria, Tony, but I don't. I think that the, there's a lot of cheaters out there, and before <laughs> yeah. we knew, well, there just are, and and rightfully so, by the way. So for before long, um, it literally became any productivity level, and so I, I honestly believe there isn't one. I think if you're brand new uh, to the business, um, th- this is this is going to be as destructive uh, mm-hmm. as it would be if you were if you were doing 50 or 70 million. To be honest with you, okay. um, so. As it, no, doing as much research as you do, do, do you find that but let me make one, putting in one, let me make one comment about that though. But sure. but but we don't speak to the brand new person. It's called mega okay, camp you. for a reason. And the point there, and we're not apologetic about it. We're very clear and upfront about what we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about financial wealth building. We are going to talk about the path to to the fifth level or sixth level or seventh level. We are going to talk about hiring people, but we're not we're not going to be bogged down into the basics. Um, we do have an expectation that someone understand that if they can't get an appointment or they can't make a presentation, this is still a great opportunity for them. But we're not going to address those issues here. Hey, right? we're, not gonna go, what, we're not going to go. We're not going to go to the base level. Great. So that's okay. what I was going to say is. Is somebody at that production level, are they intimidated, or do they still gain by being in that my environment? Experience is, my experience is they gain. I haven't okay. experienced anyone who's intimidated. I mean, you know, let, let's let's preface that. I, I think there can absolutely be a level of intimidation if you're not careful, because someone mm-hmm. sits in the audience and goes, "God, you know, I haven't even got started, or I did, you know, I did two or three million last year." A guy up there. You know, he's, he's going to do seventy million, or that woman is going to. You know, we're going to have one agent up there who will clearly crest a hundred million this year, um, or two hundred million, right? And and what happens is there can be a level of intimidation. But I I, I you know I, I think you got to ask the question. You know, is that intimidating? And they, you know, they say yes. Then you simply explore that and say, well, share with me why it is. And in the, your point is, you know. Eating, I've always said this, you know, eating an elephant can be intimidating, but you can only eat it one bite at a time. And if you intend to eat the entire elephant, it doesn't matter where you start, and you don't need to worry about the end result. Just start eating. When, when they get put in that environment, what do you suggest they do uh, with the people that both their agents and the guests they bring? How do they get them to take this information and incorporate it into the agent's Daily lives when they get back. And oh, I think it's exactly kind of the way I just the mode on that. But it's just the way I told you. It, it's by the way, it's okay. exactly what I do. I ask the question of all this information. If there were one thing I could do, such that by doing it, everything would be easier, or wouldn't even be necessary, what would be the one thing I could implement? And 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 you 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 write that down, and then you say, okay, if I could do two things, what would it be? If I could do three things, what you end up doing is creating a priority list. And then what you turn, what you do is you then say, okay, now when I go back, I'm only going to do one thing. And because you've answered the question and said, if I could only do one, I would do this, you, by definition of answering that question, have identified the thing you should be doing. And most likely, it will be the most important thing, will have the, the best impact. Okay. When you do that, the price of education is ridiculously low. Okay. When you don't ask that question and you don't approach education that way, then the, then the price and the time that you have to give to education is extremely high. Okay. So as we look at MegaCamp, I know um, one of the things you, that you've been talking about is this idea of the power of one. How does that relate to MegaCamp as far as getting that kind of an education? An education where you can't get anywhere else. Um, well, I think we. I, I appreciate the question, but I think that I think that's what we're talking about. That okay. the power of one, or the idea of the one thing, simply says, look, you can't multitask. Multitasking is a lie. You can't do two things at once. You really can't. You can't do two things that matter at once. 
Okay. And as a result of that, if you can only do one thing, what you should be asking yourself is, what's the one thing I should be doing such that when I do it, everything else is either easier or it's unnecessary? And make sure that, any, it, that you're being appropriate. The, well, here's what we know. Uh, we can go back to, to a, uh, some major research that's been done in the last 10 years on this. But what we know is that it takes three to four hours a day over at least five years and up to 10 years to really become a master at something. So when we talk about the one thing, this idea of, of, of getting what you want, what you realize is that the success is incremental. It's not simultaneous. You don't get everything at once. You get one thing at once. And so what you do is you say, okay, what would be the one thing I need to be doing as a real estate agent such that by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary? And we know the answer to that. You'd lead generate. And then you'd ask, and you'd say, okay, then what I'm going to do is the only thing I'm going to try to do is be a disciplined lead generator. See, my experience has been that when you meet someone who appears to be a highly disciplined person, what you're seeing is a person who has accumulated a lot of habits. Okay? Discipline is the ability to make yourself do something. It is, it is very rare to find someone who's highly disciplined where they are always in control based upon um, uh, training. Because that's what discipline is, right? The language, the bad language is, I'm going to go discipline that child. What do you mean you're going to go discipline them? Well, the definition would mean I'm going to go train them or beat it into them or something, right? I'm going to go, I'm going to go force that into them. So discipline is actually something that you, you, you go and you get and you, you personally bring to it. Habit is something that becomes a part of you, okay? So the idea is what you want to do is be a person of selected habit, and the way you do that is one habit at a time. And to be honest with you, this idea of 21 days is bunk. The research says it takes close to 90 days, sometimes up to one year, in order to really put an important habit into your life. So and that's the research, Tony. I mean, that, those are, that is fact. This idea of 21 days is an old wives' tale. It's, 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 uh, it's the same kind of truthiness that you hear about the, the boiling frog. You know, if you put them in a, a hot right. water, they'll jump out. But if you put them in cold water and let it slowly boil, they'll stay in and boil. Uh, well, that's a lie. A frog, when the water gets hot, jump, jumps out every time. Okay? <laughs> they just do. And, and, and Columbus didn't burn the ships after he landed in America, you know, in order for, to make everyone stay. Those are all lies. And one of the biggest lies that we have in our life is that, li that success is um, simultaneous and that I can do multiple things at once and that I need to be a disciplined person. Those are all lies. The, the reality is, is you don't need to be a disciplined person. You need to have just enough discipline to develop the right habit, and then you need to be a person of a key habit. In the real estate business, whether you're a team leader or whether you're um, an agent, is it's lead generation. You know, one of the things about my own life is I don't, I don't try to be a disciplined person. That sounds boring. I wouldn't even want to be. And when I see people that are striving to be disciplined, you look at them and go, are you a nut job? What book did you read? Where, 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 what person did you observe? And they say, well, that person over there appears to be disciplined. I say, well, let's just tear that apart. And see, one of the things that I do, and, and you know this, Tony, is I spend most of my uh, time interviewing people because I'm asking them anecdotally the, 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 you know, the question, what are you doing to be successful? And what I find is the men and women that they come on the stage or you see on a TV that have, a, that have what appears to be an amazing life have it. Because they mastered one thing, and that made everything else possible. So when we think about the one thing, all we're really talking about is you saying, okay, my one thing is professionally is real estate, and my one thing in real estate is lead generation, and my one thing in lead generation is three to four hours a day, at least five days a week, and my one thing when I'm doing that is blam, open house, blam, farming, whatever that is. Now, here's the truth. It's never just one thing, right? Our research says that for mega agents, it's usually um, three really, really key lead generation, and then it's really uh, two to three minor ones, right? Um, but it all starts with one, and then when you've done that, you add another. And this idea that I'm going to do multiple of them at the same time, you haven't studied success. Real success comes with adding one cornerstone at a time. It doesn't uh, 
doesn't really work with you taking two bricks and trying to put them both down at the same time. You're much better one at a time. So that's really what we mean by the one thing. Great. And I, and I think for everybody that's on the call and for everybody that's going to be listening to this call, because we're going to make this call available to every team leader in, this, in Keller Williams Realty, is uh, the fact that the insights that you're getting from Gary, you're going to see not only those insights for your agents and your guests that come, you're going to get to see the people that have implemented those insights into their daily lives. Right, and I right. think that's got to be the selling point when you come is, Gary, there's nobody well, that see, here's has the thing, a, Tony, is I didn't invent the idea of the one thing. I observed it and experienced it. Mm -hmm. Right? In other words, I'm sitting here working with someone, and um, I can't get them to do what they need to do. And so after a while, you say, well, just do this, and they won't do that. And ultimately, you say, okay, well, if there were just one thing you could do, what would it be? And voila, they do it, and because they can literally do one thing, anyone can, they start to have success. And when you look at these agents who are doing this massive amount of business, you have to understand that, that what appears to be complex was actually done one step at a time. It's not complex when you break it down like that. It's only complex when you see the finished product or you see it five years down the road. Hmm. Interesting thought. So as you talk to these agents and they have that one thing that's built and then they build another and they build another, um, they have got themselves at a point where they uh, have allowed themselves to build through leverage. Have you found a common thread in that leverage where they start letting go and build these teams that really can be seventh level teams? Is there one thing that creates and opens that door for that leverage? Because we as team leaders, yeah, or they, the answer is yeah. They they have one amazing administrative person. Okay. That's the big that's the big hire. That's the most freeing hire of all of them is um uh an executive assistant that can become an assistant executive. And when you see these top top agents who have big businesses and it looks like they know what they're doing, you know that old saying that behind every successful person is another successful person? Right. Guess what? Behind those those amazing megas is a successful uh, executive assistant who basically functions as an assistant executive. Well, that's an interesting thought, as, and I never thought of this until you just brought this up. Should those executive assistants for those people that we're going to be inviting, because you know we've invite we're inviting guests that do that fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred million a year, should we be inviting their executive assistant at that level too or is it is this sure. more geared to the main agent well i think the chat oh, i think it's geared to any of them i i it's okay. geared to anybody i think that okay. the trick is at some point um these people have to be respected and educated too the worst kind of education is where the agent always gets educated and never educates their team that would be the biggest mistake on the planet okay. the smartest thing hello Gary? Oh, no. He'll be back. He'll be back. Well, I just, just want to bring that up to all the team leaders that are on the call and OPs is um, until Gary brought that up, that key hire, you may, on some of these mega agents, bring that that uh, key hire that, uh, like Gary calls them, assistant executive uh, to mega camp also because they may be more influential and getting that mega agent to your market center than you would be with just the um, with just the agent there because they're the ones that run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. And he said, you know, don't leave those people out in the education process. And so this may be a wonderful opportunity to open the door to people that we've never opened that door to, and that is the executive assistant because, like he said, these people are successful because of one key hire. So now you're getting the two key people in that operation, and a lot of times that key hire or that assistant executive comes to Megacamp, gets the big picture, could be almost as influential, if not more influential, in getting that mega agent over to Keller Williams. So, Gary, did you get, did we find you? Did you get back on? Okay, I don't know what's happening there. So anyway, I, I'm just kind of going on go on a couple other other points too. Um, 
we we were looking for uh, when we when you when you're recruiting those uh, those mega agents to. Oh, okay, we lost them. Um, we can't hear them. Okay, um, can you um, just? I'm just uh, hang on one second, everybody. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Gary? Yep, sorry about that. No, that's okay. Got you back. So we were just uh, one thing I just mentioned to everybody while you're gone is it'd be a great idea for them to talk to some of these mega agents and invite their their key assistant to the to Mega Camp also because Absolutely. like you said, nobody probably gives them that opportunity to be educated at the level that we would provide for them at Mega that's right. Camp. That's exactly right. And there's no other place to go and get this kind of information. It's pretty much uh, the best of the best, if you will. It's this upper mm -hmm. echelon, and they're covering all the areas. So mm -hmm. it's not Gary's system or Tony's system or Diana's system or Craig's system or Bill's system or Howard's system or whoever's system. It, right. It's just the way people are doing it. How many people do you think you talk to in a year? This would be uh, uh, on on gathering information between Mega Camp and Family Reunion. How many people do you think you interview in a year to gather the best practices and the best of the best concept? I would guess somewhere over 300. Wow. I mean, there's another great selling point for Mega Camp, considering that this information is provided by not only 300 agents, but those are 300 of top agents in the whole country and Canada. Exactly. And that doesn't count the people that Mindy is talking to um, to get to that number. Okay. So you're you're just talking to the 300 that get to you. There there could be another 3 or 400 ahead of that that are kind of screened. Uh, easily through. easily could be another 100 or so ahead of that. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then the other thing is if you want some you know what we don't pick up at Mega Camp, be sure cuz some of the people that Gary has interviewed are also on Agent Mountain. So that's another place to go to gather information about best practices that we're doing in the industry. Yeah, it's interesting. I had a, um, an agent recently who was a team leader who, who went back to be an agent, and they said they started listening to Agent Mountain. They said, you know, I really appreciate it differently now. What did they, what did you, okay, so tell us a little bit about Agent Mountain and how we could best use it as long as you have the team leaders on the phone today. Well, the purpose of Agent Mountain um, was really let, to let people hear my research. You know, this is, the, this is what I do, and... Um, one day we just had a big aha. This was a couple of years ago, and we said, "Well, you know, if we simply put a put a record button and hit it on these interviews, then, gosh, we would actually be able to um, let everybody hear it." And you know, if if I got a, just a little more focused, but prior to start in recording it, um, we took a little longer, and it was a little less um, uh, specific because I was digging a little differently. And so I had to change my style just a little bit. But once I got comfortable with that, I was fine. So that's all we're really doing, Tony, is hitting the record button on my personal research. And I'm taking notes like crazy. You can even hear me sometimes in the interview. I'm actually, um, uh, you know, pausing. Right. And what's happening is I'm writing, and I'm writing in my spiral notebook. Great. So yeah, Agent Mountain is really – if our team leaders really wanted to be up on what people are doing and doing the best, Agent Mountain is a great way to do that. And, you know, we used to have these long-winded interviews, but we've now, we time them, and we now try to, we try to keep them under uh, 20 minutes. Uh, that is hard to do, particularly if you get a really good interview, and they're running with it. Um, and then you just kind of let it run, you know, because you just, you, it's just too good. And I need the information. I want to hear it. I want to understand. Okay. And your goal of understanding is to be able to present to us as agents in the company. Well, my original goal was to run the company based on what I was doing and make yeah. decisions accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as my role changed in the organization, um, those interviews con continued to, you know. Remember, um, the millionaire real estate agent came from those interviews. I mean, the millionaire real estate agent came from that process of talking to agents and going through my notes. 
and then pulling everybody together and and presenting those and then letting those top people massage and change and and you know and give me the feedback. Shift was written completely from Agent Mountain interviews. Completely, it, it, we literally went to the notebooks, uh, the interview notes, and wrote Shift from them. Can can just while well, I've got you on the phone, then could you just um, in this market as a team leader, how would you use the shift book and MREA book for this market in recruiting agents to the company? Well, that's a loaded question. You know, the first off, when you say this market, my response is, uh, the, what do you mean? The this market, market of today. <laughs> yeah, you mean any market? You mean yeah, forever? Okay. Well, right. I think that there. I, I think those. I think that the millionaire real estate agent, millionaire real estate investor, and shift are like secret weapons. I think they are and have been proven to be. Uh, the absolute models of the business. Um, the the you know we go back and periodically reread those, Tony. And the reason we do is to ask the question: Has anything gotten out of date? And what's fascinating is very little, very little actually. Probably probably less than a couple of percent. There's not a lot that's actually out of date. I mean, it's so little it almost doesn't uh, warrant bringing it up. It is extremely, extremely accurate. Now, we've learned a lot more since then, and Agent Mountain ferrets that out. But the books themselves are incredibly accurate. They are still absolutely accurate. What I don't understand is why a team leader doesn't have a stack of those books at all times sitting on their desk, not on the shelf, sitting on the desk just like I do. And when they're working with someone, they literally pull the book out and refer to it or say, do you not have a copy? take this copy, and let's look for the solution or the answer to what you're talking about in this book. It, w it is literally the, the, the foundational research for how you build a business. And we know that because in our interviews we ask people, the top, top, top ones, not the average ones. And what we hear over and over again is it's accurate. It's extremely accurate. So th th it would be sitting on your desk. You, know, you would have a box of them in your car. And your goal would be to give them out. What astounds me, Tony, is we'll only give we'll we'll only sell two thousand copies of Millionaire Real Estate Investor this year. Wow. Huh. Only two thousand copies. What does that tell you? What that tells you is we have an industry that's asleep at the wheel. Because the Millionaire Real Estate Investor is the only book you could give out to someone that would that, about investing that would lead them back to the realtor. Go look at all the other investment books. They don't lead them back to a realtor. And we did it subtly, and we did it honestly, and, we did it, and we, we, we did it in a manner where it actually is true. This is how it works. September. But only 2,000 copies. Do you realize that most likely we'll take it out of print, and you won't be able to get it? Because, it, you know, you can't print for less than four or 5,000 copies. So to me, it's astounding. You know, I built my financial wealth on it, and here and – here, and, and it's accurate. And I have people come up to me all the time and say who've actually read it and applied it in their life. But I think what happens is is that because people don't think about money, they don't understand it, and they apply no effort to try to understand it, it intimidates them. In other words, they got educated when they were 20 years old, and they haven't gotten educated since, and they don't think they need to. And that astounds me, no offense, but it astounds me. It just astounds me. Now, as a competitor, I really like that because it leads more opportunity for me. Because the thing I want the most is to have dumb people competing against me. <laughs> so I love the fact that my competitors are dumb, for the most part, in terms of they won't do it. But I look up and I go, but the people I'm in business with, oh, my gosh, I failed them. Somehow I failed them for them to understand that, my gosh, you would have, I would have expected, I did expect, that the millionaire real estate investor, would, there would be forty or 50,000 copies a year that would go out there. And the reason is because when an agent had a closing, they would give a copy to everybody that they sold a house to and say, look, I want you to read this book, and when you're done, I'd like to come back and talk to you about being your realtor for life. And I'd like to talk to you about handling all of your real estate and getting together on a regular basis and talking about your real estate. Well, they don't do it. We know they don't do it. No, they don't. No, yeah, don't. Today, and I don't understand but, it. And if I'm a team leader, I thought that was my job to get them to do that. I, I, I'm sorry, but I thought that was what I'm supposed to do. 
I thought when I got up in the morning, my job was to help people build careers worth having. And the way I would do that is I would hand them those books. Now, if you don't hand them those books, what book are you handing them? That's what I want to know. What, what, are you, what are you giving to someone? If you're not giving them the best models in the industry for buying real estate or for investment purposes, or you're giving them the, the, um, uh, the millionaire real estate agent to build, to build their career on or shift to deal with the current situation, what book are you giving them? What are you telling them to do? I don't understand that. And the cool thing is, is these books happen to be written by your own company. So they subtly um, validate this organization as an organization that understands it. So sorry, you're, you, you open up a soapbox when you bring that question up. I don't get it. I really don't get it. You know, um, Especially you know, when you're son, looking at what? It's interesting. You know, I told the story in The Million, a real estate investor, about my son who one day said, Dad, I want my own money. And, um, and he really wanted me to give him money. And I said, you know, I'm not going to give you money, but I'll help you learn to make money. So I ultimately um, uh, heard of an idea, and I implemented it, and I helped John start his own corporation. And John's owned his own business since he was, what, 13, 14 years old? When he went to college, Tony, he had $27,000 after tax in the bank and had given almost $6,000 to charity, to KW Cares, actually. Wow. And it still astounds me that people don't understand money. My son looks to me and he says, I need to be an apprentice. He says, I'm going to college to get an education, to pick a trade, and then go get a job to be an apprentice, to learn how to do it and then start my own business and invest money to build wealth. And I'm going, jeepers, isn't that what we want people to say? Mm -hmm. Well, how, would you do, how are you going to get them to do that? Isn't that our job as team leaders? To get our people... I mean, to understand this. And by the way, do you think because rents are going up, because people aren't buying real estate and living in it as much, do you think that people are investing? What's the yes. answer to that, Tony? Absolutely. Almost 30% of the sales are investor sales. Okay, and here's a blue book that absolutely explains it. Our power is all about investors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's another interesting thing. And 2,000 are getting sold? Jeepers. That's embarrassing. Yep. yep. Well, that's a great point, and, and I think something that we need to just bring up to everybody. The other part of it, too, is most of those investors are cash, so they're nice and uncomplicated closings and transactions you know, today. Yeah, well, the thing that, the thing that I say, and, and remember, I am obnoxious, so this is why they don't <laughs> let me on these calls much, and they don't let me out in the public much, because I don't understand it, and I start getting irritated. And what I, you know, if, we, if, if, I, if, I, if I went to... Um, and called all our team leaders and OPs in a room, and I said, "Okay, we're going to have like a we're going to have a, a spelling contest, right? And we're going to line up against, you know, and we're going to divide into two groups. And, and the first two team leaders are going to come up to the front of the room, and I'm going to ask you a question about building a mega business, or I'm going to ask you a question about building financial wealth. I wonder how many would show up and go, sure, I'm ready, test me, mm -hmm. or would they run for the hills and have a, and take a sick day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and see, my experience is they take a sick day fast." Because they would be they would be absolutely scared to death to be put on the spot about talking about how you actually build a mega business. Remember, the reason we started Mega Camp was because we had a problem out in the field that the top top agents felt superior to their team leaders. And the interesting thing about that is is that there's no, there's no excuse for that. You don't have to have done it to be able to teach and coach it. You know, my, my personal coach, Bane Henyon, who I just spent a day and a half with this past week, uh, and, and has been my coach since, what, 84? I'm sorry, 94, 1994? And, you know, we started out, I had to pay him 100000 a year. Right now we pay him over a half a million a year. Okay? So when you think about what people can pay to, to get a MAPS coach, I don't think it's a half a million dollar. I think it's right. a lot cheaper than that. But see, I'm fishing for, for big fish here. But the interesting thing is, is that um, uh, he, his business and the whole time that he's been coaching me, it's never grown. Now, do I judge that? No, I don't. And the reason is because he didn't want it to. Right. But does he understand it? Oh my gosh, he's a genius. He understands it. He gets it. So I don't judge my coach. If my coach gets it, my coach gets it. They don't have to have done it. They didn't have. To, he didn't have to go sell, you know, 100 million a year to coach me to 100 million. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, that's not that's not necessary at all. I guarantee you, Brian Buffini didn't sell 100 million. 
I guarantee you Howard Brenton didn't sell 100 million. I guarantee you, you know, that none of those trainers did. Nope. They didn't. None of them. I agree with that one. No, Ferry didn't. None of them did. But that's irrelevant. The, 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 being a coach is about understanding it. And usually coaches never did as well as the, the person they coach is because they have this quirky thing, see? They wanted to be a coach. <laughs> and because they wanted to be a coach, they were more fascinated with the models and the systems and the ideas than they were about doing it. That's why they didn't do it. My experience is it's usually not because they couldn't do it. It's because they weren't motivated to do that. They were more motivated about understanding it. And their their mechanism was they wanted to help others through teaching and coaching and training and advising and leading. That's that's what made them happy. Okay. Well, that's that's most likely why they didn't do it. It's not because they couldn't do it. They were they were they were a different animal. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. Wonderful. Uh, we've been on the phone for about 45 minutes, Gary. I really, really appreciate your time. What would be your parting thought about MegaCamp to everybody that's on the call? Come. Come, if you can. If you can afford it and you can find the time, come. And bring as many people as you can. What we've discovered is, and I've, I've discovered this too, uh, is that is, you'll, you'll have no negative response from it. And, and the odds of anyone coming up to you and saying, how dare you invite me to this? Don't ever invite me again to anything Final like up. this. Oh, I don't happen. know how bad 400 is. Oh, hello. If you're on the call, if you're speaking and you're not on mute, please mute yourself. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> well, that was actually me yelling. Um, I'm a ventriloquist. No, I'm, that's <laughs> it. I, I think you, 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 you come if you can. And you bring your spiral notebook, and you get it out, and you take notes like crazy. And you, you go away asking the question, based on everything I heard, what's the one thing I could do that if I did that, I could take my career and my business and the lives of the people that I work with to the next level. And you practice the same thing that you're going to ask others to do. Great. Gary, I really, really appreciate you taking time to be on our call today. Thanks, so, buddy. And we're, we're all looking forward to seeing you at Mega Camp in 19 days, everybody. Make right, it a great day. Gary, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.